hello today i am going to discuss the different material properties of the uh, steel uh, because we are going to use the steel as a structural material so before going to use uh, that we must know what are the behavior of the steel uh, for using that means for using as a structural material like steel we should know the uh, composition of the steel then how the composition are going to vary uh, along with the structural properties then what are the structural properties uh, are there in case of uh, steel material what are the advantages of uh, steel and disadvantages of steel so that we can uh, wisely use uh, the steel as a structural material so these aspects will be discussed also we will see uh, we know the structure i mean steel is uh, to some extent ductile so how it behaves under stress strain uh, curve means the stress strain curve of steel uh, we'll see how the um, strain is going to vary with stress those aspects will be discussed in today's lecture so before going to use the steel as a design material we will try to understand what are the advantages and disadvantages of the uh, steel so if we look into the uh, different type of advantages one is the better quality control this better quality control means the steel is basically factory product so its quality is maintained uh, in a better way in with respect to concrete material so therefore its property will be uniform and its properties are well defined so when we are going to design we know with confidence that these are the property we are going to get unlike in case of concrete we are not very sure what uh, property we are going to achieve and uh, there will be a gap uh, between the um, target strength and the design strength but in this case that gap is quite less this is the uh, advantageous property of the steel another property is the uh, it is lighter with respect to other building material it is quite light light in the sense the um, uh, strength to weight ratio is very high means steel's weight is um, light in compared to its strength so with less um, amount of space we can uh, provide the member and uh, that member can withstand uh, large amount of load with a small space uh, unlike in case of concrete structure that is why it has certain uh, um, advantages and also as it is lighter so dead load on the structure will be less so if dead load on the structure will be less so uh, what it will uh, uh, create that uh, consequently the size of the structural member uh, for carrying out that load will be less so the space uh, in the inside will be comparatively high compared to concrete structures now another aspect we have that faster to erect means unlike concrete rcc structure uh, this can be erect at site very quickly uh, because uh, all steel load sections are available so once it is transported to the site just we need the connections properly and then we can um, erect the uh, structure as we as desired uh, another thing is the reduced site time uh, fast track construction means uh, it is very quickly construction can be made so uh, time of construction time will be comparatively less which is uh, advantage for uh, construction purpose then large column free space and amenable for alteration this is what i was telling column free space will be getting less uh, sorry high because the size of the column in case of steel uh, structure size of the column will be comparatively less in respect to the rcc column so the um, uh, free space uh, will be much more as respect to rcc and also as it is lighter so the size of the column will be comparatively less uh, in instead of using uh, rcc right then less material handling at site at site in case of rcc structure we have to handle this coarse aggregate fine aggregate cement uh, then water and a uh, lot of material handle has to be done and a uh, uh, lot of wastage also happens in that uh, in the site 
a lot of hazardous uh, come into picture at the site, but uh, uh, in case of steel structure uh, we will be free from those type of hazardous and as less material handling is there. So, uh, loss of uh, means wastage will be comparatively less. Then less percentage of floor area occupied by structural elements that is what I told already and the most important thing is that it is a better ductile and hence it is it can carry the um, lateral load in a better way and that means it is earthquake resistant and wind resistance. Ductile uh, if the structure becomes ductile then what will happen that earthquake energy can be absorbed and uh, without failure uh, it can be transferred to the ground. So, if the structure is ductile uh, we can have uh, better resistance uh, due to seismic excitation also it will be better in case of cyclone. So, these are the few of the um, advantageous property I discussed and similarly uh, we need to know the disadvantages of steel material because unless we know the disadvantages we cannot make use uh, confidently we cannot make use properly. So, when we are going to use steel we must know what are the advantages and disadvantages and then uh, we can make use um, wisely the steel material uh, wherever it is necessary. So, one disadvantage is the uh, skill labor uh, is required unlike RCC structure here skill labor is required for connections because connections has to be made properly and that connections uh, may be oil connection or bolt connection or maybe rivet connection uh, uh, with the accurate accuracy means with a higher degree of accuracy we have to join so that the load is transferred from beam to column, column to foundation and also se from secondary beam to beam from uh, slab to means floor to beam etcetera. Uh, another thing is higher cost of construction actually uh, material cost of steel is quite high as compared to concrete. So, um, construction cost will be quite high as compared to concrete. So, we have to make use uh, of steel wisely because uh, unnecessary if it is not required then we should not go for steel construction because it will uh, make costly. So, this is another disadvantages uh, because it is uh, high cost. Then another thing is maintenance cost is quite high. Maintenance cost is high means uh, uh, to means after construction uh, due to um, humidity and other uh, problem uh, it get corroded. So, because of corrosion uh, steel strength get uh, reduced. So, time to time frequently we need to make painting we need to make maintenance. Therefore, uh, painting uh, means uh, time to time painting can uh, has to be done and because of painting cost will means maintenance cost will be high. So, unlike concrete structure here maintenance cost will be in a disadvantageous position. Uh, next is poor fire proofing as um, at uh, 1000 degree Fahrenheit that means 538 degree centigrade almost 65 percent strength remains. So, 35 percent strength uh, vanishes. Similarly, uh, at 1600 degree Fahrenheit uh, 15 percent strength only remains that means 85 percent strength got reduced. So, therefore, uh, it is less fire proofing. Uh, so, we have to be cautious about the um, fire safety while using the uh, steel as a structural material. Uh, then uh, another problem is that electricity may be required if we um, uh, construct in a remote area where electricity is a problem then uh, we may not be able to go for welded connection properly. So, um, uh, sometimes we need uh, electric connection which may not be available uh, at the site. So, in that case we means we have to face problem from that. So, these are the few advantages uh, disadvantages of the uh, steel using as a structural material. Now, uh, coming to chemical composition of the um, steel basically steel is an alloy which maintain mainly uh, contains iron and carbon. Apart from the uh, carbon a small percentage of manganese, silicon, phosphorus, nickel and copper are also added to modify the specific properties of steel. Here in IS 2062 uh, 1992 and uh, IS 8500 the chemical composition of structural steel has been given. 
So, some of the chemical composition of uh, different structural grade of steel has been reported in this table uh, like Fe 410 of grade A, B, C uh, the percentage of carbon has been shown. So, different percentage of carbon manganese uh, then sulfur, phosphorus, silicon and carbon equivalent has been given. So, with a different ratio of this uh, we can achieve a particular grade of steel and uh, that means uh, a particular grade of steel means a particular uh, strength we will be able to achieve. Here carbon equivalent means basically the uh, carbon plus manganese by 6 then um, chromium plus molybdenum plus vanadium by 5 and nickel plus copper by 15. So, this summation is called carbon equivalent which is uh, given here right and uh, the terms in bracket denote the maximum limit of the flat products. Ma this, this bracket in bracket whatever it is giving it for it is for flat product. So, uh, if we want to produce means if we want to know what, uh, in a particular grade of steel what are the composition uh, that can be found uh, from this table. Now, coming to type of structural steel we can see that uh, uh, one is uh, uh, carbon steel basically different steel have uh, been produced based on uh, necessity by changing uh, chemical composition and manufacturing process. So, in case of carbon steel uh, the structural steel carbon and manganese are used as extra element and another type of steel is high strength carbon steel by increasing the carbon content this type of steel can be manufactured which basically produces steel with comparatively higher strength, but less ductility. So, uh, for this type of uh, steel you will get um, high strength, but less ductile this is uh, high strength carbon steel another steel is stainless steel in this type of steel mainly foreign materials like nickel and chromium are used along with small percentage of carbon. Now, being a structural engineer we will try to see what is the properties of uh, structural steel. Now, properties means different type of properties uh, structural steel have, but being structural engineer or a uh, steel designer uh, we will be focusing on ultimate strength, yield strength and the ductility. These three things are very important this is mechanical properties. Uh, this is ultimate strength what will be the ultimate strength and what will the yield stress and then ductility whether it is ductile or not. These are very important uh, for uh, using the steel and also weldability, toughness, corrosion resistance and machinability are also some of the uh, properties mechanical properties and in this this last four properties are important for durability of material. And and often associate with fabrication of steel members. So, for uh, durability consideration this last four um, uh, properties are very important we have to keep in mind and mechanical properties of the steel largely depends on these five uh, uh, things one is the chemical composition uh, this chemical composition. So, we have to know what is the carbon percentage is given and other uh, different elements uh, what are the percentage of that are present. So, depending on that the mechanical properties of the steel will vary and then the heat treatment how the treatment is going to be made for producing steel then stress history and rolling methods and rolling thickness. So, these are the few things few parameters which we have to keep in mind uh, for getting uh, the structural properties of the steel because this the structural properties of steel largely depends on this. Now, uh, the structural steel whatever we are using it should confirm that IS 2062 2011 this is hot rolled medium and high tensile structural steel. So, it should confirm to this code and we use mostly the AP 410 grade of steel most commonly used grade uh, in general we can see that it is AP 410 and few physical properties of structural steel. Uh, which are given in IS 800 2007 
in clause 2.2.441 because this is also this property is also will be required for some times like unit mass of steel rho the density of mass density of steel is 7850 kg per meter cube this is required because when we are going to find out the cell point of the structure uh, cell point of the steel structure then we have to find out the what is the weight of the steel uh, in that case uh, we have to know the mass density of steel unless we know that we will not be able to get the proper load uh, mean cell point what is coming due to the steel member next is the modulus of elasticity this is also important to find out the stiffness of the uh, steel member and this we consider that 2 into 10 to the 5 newton per millimeter square poisson ratio also is important which we consider in general 0.3 and modulus of rigidity g g is uh, as, uh, considered as 0 0.769 into 10 to the 5 newton per millimeter square and coefficient of thermal expansion for um, heat related problem we may have to consider this thermal expansion that is alpha is equal to 12 into 10 to the minus 6 per degree Celsius because steel can expand or contract and because of that stress may develop. So, that thermal stress or whatever is going to be developed that has to be uh, calculated and that additional forces has to be calculated while uh, analyzing the structure. So, in that case thermal expansion coefficient is important. Now, coming to mechanical properties as I told the three things are very important that is one is yield stress, what is the yield stress of the uh, steel, what is the ultimate stress and the minimum percentage elongation, minimum percentage of elongation. So, this we can find out um, uh, in table 1 of IS 800-2007 mechanical properties of structural steel like we use Fe 410 grade of steel. So, in that case the yield stress is reported as 250 and ultimate stress is 410 MPa and elongation percentage is 23. Here you see another yield stress is given for uh, thickness from 20 mm to 40 mm for this 250 we can achieve if thickness is less than 20 mm, but t if t is 20 to 40 then 240 and if t is this thickness is more than 40 mm then the yield stress is going to be considered as 230 MPa. So, for a p 410 grade of steel what we use? We use yield stress either 250, 240 or 230 and ultimate stress as 410 and elongation percentage as 23. Similarly, Fe 450 grade of steel we can find out yield stress as 300 and ultimate stress as 440 and uh, elongation is uh, 22. So, in this way uh, we can find out the important properties like yield stress, um, uh, ultimate stress and percentage elongation from the grade of steel if a particular grade of steel is given then we can find out what is the yield stress, ultimate strength and strength and um, grade of steel. Right. Now, coming to ductility, a very important parameter in case of steel design is ductility. So, I will discuss little more about ductility. It is the ability to deform under tensile force. Ductility is basically the ability to deform under tensile force and uh, it undergoes large inelastic deformation in, in case of ductility, ductile material uh, inelastic deformation happens and uh, inelastic deformation means permanent deformation without loss of strength under the application of rule. So, if we see uh, something like this uh, the stress strain diagram of the uh, material if this is strain and this is stress then uh, this portion is basically the ductility portion where stress is not developing as such, but the strain is going to be increased and if we uh, release the load uh, it will be coming to its 
uh, earlier position of course, or in not in same path because it is inelastic, but it will come to its uh, earlier position with certain deformation. This ductility means if duct, uh, the material is ductile that means it will be much more seismic resistant. So, we prefer ductile material. So, that the uh, deformations are allowed without failure. Then another property we also come across which is called hardness. Hardness is one of the mechanical properties of steel uh, by virtue of which it offers resistance to the indention and scratching. So, hardness can be measured by different tests uh, like raw coil test, raw coil hardness test. Another uh, test uh, we make which is called Vickers hardness test. And then another test uh, through which the hardness is measured is called Brinell hardness test. So, through this one can test the hardness of the material and another property also we come across is called toughness. So, I am discussing some property mechanical properties and other properties of steel which is important to know for designing the structure and when we are going to design a member we must know what is the behavior of the member under load say for example, if we make stress strain diagram of a material say stress and strain. So, brittle material means it will be like this and suddenly it will fail brittle material and ductile material means it will not fail it will undergo strain. So, this is ductile material. Now, toughness is the ability to absorb energy up to fracture. Toughness is called the ability to absorb energy up to fracture and this toughness is measured by the area under the stress strain curve. So, stress strain curve of this material and stress strain curve of this material the area we can find out and we can measure the toughness. So, the ability to absorb the energy up to fracture is called toughness. It is a one type of mechanical properties of steel. So, it basically it offers resistance to fracture under the action of impact load. So, this is one property another is fatigue. Fatigue means the repeated loading. Uh, it is uh, means damage is caused due to repeated loading, repeated fluctuation of stresses and which uh, leads to progressive of uh, cracking of the structural image and due to cyclically, uh, cyclic loading damage and failure of the material may happen which is called fatigue. And another is resistance against corrosion means what are the resistance property uh, against corrosion that also uh, we have to keep in mind. In presence of moisture, corrosion of steel is uh, means corrosion of steel happens. So, to avoid that what we can do? We can go for painting or metallic coating, metallic coating. So, either of these two uh, can be made to take care of the corrosion. So, this is one property which we have to keep in mind and then another property is residual stress. Residual stress come into picture because of uneven heating and cooling. Because of uneven heating and cooling the residual stress is in the member developed. So, uh, how the material has been produced depending on the uh, what are the residual stress are there that we can uh, we can calculate we can found 
and accordingly the design of the member can be done. Then another is stress concentration, when certain changes of um, geometry properties are there, so stress concentration. Concentration. It is basically um, a highly localized state of stress where at particular location stress is concentrated and because of abrupt change of the shape uh, in the vicinity of notch where say suppose a member is like this. So, sudden change uh, at the vicinity of notch can make the uh, uh, development of stress concentration and also uh, during uh, uh, near the hole uh, near the hole the stress also generated uh, several times greater than the actual stress and for that we have to take care that means when we are going to design there may be chances of failure at certain localized point because of concentration of stress. So, we have to make the section in such a way that stress concentration can be avoided. Now, we will come to the stress strain curve. So, stress strain curve of a mild steel we will see first. Say this is strain which is called epsilon and this is stress which is called sigma. right? Now, in case of mild steel an ideal curve is looks like this. Right. So, this is the origin from where stress strain curve develops. So, and this is point A, this point A up to point A that means up to O means from point O to point A is called limit of proportionality. This portion is called limit of proportionality. That means, proportionality right. That means, up to this it is linear and it obeys the Hooke's law. So, O A is basically called the limit of proportionality. Then from A to B a to B uh, actually after reaching point A uh, change in strain is rapid compared to that of stress, but still the material behaves elastically up to elastic limit of B. It behaves elastically, but change of strain is rapid compared to stress up to point B means part A B. Right. So, uh, this up to point B is elastic limit then point C, point C is the upper yield point, upper yield point means if we go on increasing the force then we will observe that yield point means it reaches yield point, upper yield point. So, after upper yield point again it will come down to say sorry, sorry this we call C dash and this is C. So, C is the lower yield point right. This observation of C dash and C point depends on the rate of loading. If I means uh, 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 depending on the rate of loading we can observe the point C and C dash. Then C D part. So, beyond yield point the material start flowing plastically without any significant increase in the stress and material goes large deformation. So, C D part is basically plastic, plastic part. So, it means it flow like plastic and without any increase of the stress uh, the strain increases. Then up to point E D E, D E means after reaching point D strain hardening occurs in the material 
and which necessitates the requirement of higher load to continue the deformation. This phenomenon is called strain hardening. That means, it resists deformation and needs more load to deform. So, after C D means where load was not increasing, but after that point uh, it starts resisting uh, deformation. So, strain hardening occurs. So, with the increase of stress, uh, strain also is going to increase up to certain level, which is the highest point E. And E this E represents the F U, the ultimate stress, right? And after that, uh, the stress going to be reduced, and at a certain point, it breaks. So F is the breaking stress, right? F is the breaking stress. So this is how the material behaves. So, what we need to know that when we are going to design a steel member, we have to know what is the properties of steel under load. That means, stress strain diagram how it varies, in case of mild steel it varies in a way, in case of torque steel it varies another way. So, we have to know and accordingly we have to find out what is the FU value and what is the FY value and what will be the uh, strain at FU and strain at FY. Right. That means, how much ductile this material is depending on that means, we can think of designing the uh, uh, member properly. So, when we will go to the design procedure the member when member is going to uh, be designed under certain procedure like working stress method or limit state method or ultimate stress um, strain design method we have to know the um, stress strain diagram stress strain behavior of the material. So, that we can understand that up to what level we are going to allow the deformation and then how we are going to uh, find out the maximum allowable stress and then according to that design criteria would be decided. So, this is all about the uh, today's lecture about the steel as a structural material. Thank you.